The funeral of Pogue's frontman Shane McGowan is taking place in Ireland today following his death last week. Thousands of mourners have lined the streets of the Irish capital to say goodbye to the star, famous, of course, for his festive hit, The Fairy Tale of New York, which his widow and friends now hope will be made number one for Christmas. Uh, joining us now from over there is journalist Ken Murray, who is outside the church in Nina, where the funeral mass is due to take place. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, we were told there'd be a big star turnout. Uh, have you seen many famous faces there? I'm afraid not. Uh, so far, it's been rather thin on celebrities. Uh, the only name of note that I've seen go into the church here in Nina is a man called Glenn Hansard. Not exactly a household name in Britain, but Glenn Hansard won the Oscar for Best Song at the Oscars back in 2007. But it's expected that a lot of high-profile names from the world of rock and roll, from politics and indeed from public life in Britain and Ireland uh, will attend when the mass gets underway here at St Mary's Church in Nina at about half past three. As you said in your introduction, uh, the uh, funeral cortege of Shane McGowan got underway in Dublin City this morning at 11 o'clock. It was uh, preceded by the Artane Boys Band, ceremonial band, and it made its way around a number of streets in Dublin. And there seems to be a, a theme of rebel or rebellion running through this funeral because the uh, funeral cortege in Dublin uh, went to the small town of uh, Ringsend and then made its way to Pierce Street. Porrick Pierce was a famous rebel in the 1916 rebellion in Dublin when uh, rebels engaged in an uprising to try and end British rule in Ireland. So Porrick Pierce was one of uh, Shane McGowan's heroes, if you like. The funeral cortege then made its way into a street known as Westland Row. Westland Row is where Oscar Wilde was born. And then further on up at the top of Westland Row is a place called Sweeney's Pharmacy, where the cortege stopped. And Sweeney's Pharmacy was made famous in the book Ulysses by James Joyce. So these were people that uh, Shane McGann looked up to and admired uh, during his particular life. And one thing that's uh, by pure coincidence, I presume, but today is actually the uh, anniversary of the birth date of Sinead O'Connor. She was born on December the 8th. So she was another rebellious Irish woman and somebody that uh, Shane McGann looked up to uh, and admired. So the funeral procession left Dublin City at around 12 noon. It made its way down the M7. It's currently en route. Nina is about 100 miles from Dublin City, and we expect the funeral cortege to arrive here uh, at St Mary's Church uh, within the next half hour to 45 minutes. In terms of celebs, well, the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, will be here. In his statement last year, he described Shane, Shane McGowan's music as music like crafted poetry. Other big names who spoke very highly about Shane McGowan in the last seven days were people like Bruce Springsteen, the rocker Tom Waits, uh, and Paul Simon. There's an expectation that Australian singer Nick Cave will be here, as will Hollywood actor Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was the best man at Shane McGowan's wedding to Victoria Mary Clark back in 2018. So these are the names that are being spoken about here in St Mary's Church in Nina. Well, he deserves, Ken, uh, a good turnout, I think. Uh, and, of course, I think uh, for uh, many people around the world, he's, he's, he's obviously famous for Fairy Tale of New York, which, by the way, uh, we are hoping gets the number one. Don't forget, Shane was born on Christmas Day. You mentioned Sinead O'Connor. She uh, was a close friend of him. She once reported him to the police for heroin use in 1999, uh, obviously hoping to help him there. Uh, but he's very famous for his... Uh, uh, lifestyle, his drinking, his drug taking, uh, which possibly overshadows unjustifiably his talent, uh, the brilliance of the Pogues, his brilliant songwriting. Uh, try to sum up what Shane McGowan means to Ireland. Well, Shane McGowan was, if you like, singing Irish 
songs, songs about Ireland, the Irish emigrant experience, particularly in the 1980s. And, you know, you will recall that it was difficult to be Irish in Britain in the 1980s. The IRA campaign was very active in Northern Ireland and at times uh, spread to, to England and particularly to London. It was difficult to be Irish. People like Terry Wogan, people like Eamon Andrews, uh, people... Um, like Dana, the singer who won the Eurovision Song Contest, were all making a name for themselves uh, in Britain in the 70s and the 80s. And Shane came along at a time when, as I say, it was difficult to be Irish. You will recall, of course, that the IRA uh, tried to kill Margaret Thatcher in Brighton in 1984, I think it was, and this created a lot of bad feeling towards the Irish. But Shane McGowan was a guy who if you like, stood up to the hostility towards Irish people, particularly with his distinctive Irish traditional sound. And it connected very well with Irish people and indeed Irish people around the world. He was a rebel. He was fond of his drink. Uh, that's, you know, that's no secret. He was very fond of drugs as well. He got himself into a lot of trouble. And yet, despite the difficulties he faced in his personal life, his music shone through. And I suppose to cheer you up, uh, to make you feel good <laughs> on this very wet uh, December day, I was reading recently that the song Fairy Tale of New York, written by Shane McGowan and his co-writer Jem Finer, it was earning something like half a million a year in royalty payments for the two songwriters. Because, as you know, once... December rolls around. Every radio station in Britain, Ireland, Canada, America and Australia, wherever there are large Irish communities around the world, they play this song off the air and he has benefited greatly from those royalties. But today, the people of Dublin and in particular, the people of Nina. This is where his parents came from. He was born in Pembury in Kent, but here is a place where he came to uh, as a child and got very much engrossed in the Irish way of life, the Irish Irish culture, a place where he visited regularly and had lots of friends and it, indeed it was one of his uh, desires that on the time he would die he would have his funeral mass in this town. They've been showing their respect and appreciation for his work and his genius by showing out here in large numbers today. So the funeral mass gets underway at half past three. A number of musicians and bands will perform in the church following the funeral mass this evening. The funeral cortege will make its way around Nina Town, give the locals a final opportunity to say their goodbye to Shane, and he will be cremated tomorrow, and we're told his ashes will be sprinkled into the nearby River Shannon.